for something I'm really excited about from my lab, which is we had this idea a few years ago that AlphaFold was so helpful for figuring out how proteins break in disease, being able to fold them up to figure out their sort of origami 3D structure. Could we do something similar for DNA? So for the whole chromosomes, the other part. Um, and this is really important because every cell in your body has a very long strand of DNA in it. In fact, even though the cells are microscopic, if you spread it out, that thread of DNA would be uh, uh, several feet long. And that has to cram up inside of your cells. And if you just crammed it in, like threw your yarn into your basket, it would be a big mess and all knotted up and you wouldn't be able to work with it. It turns out for our genome to function correctly, it has to fold up just like you would wind up yarn into balls. You need to wind up the genome very precisely in a certain way, or it also breaks. So um, one of our big AI breakthroughs in our lab recently has been a model that predicts how the whole chromosome folds, not just the individual proteins, but the whole chromosome. I didn't think this would be possible. It's a much harder problem because the molecule is much bigger than a single protein, and there's a lot less information content um, in it. As we say in computer science, the easy way to think about that is proteins are made up of an alphabet of 20 letters, and DNA only has four letters, A, C, T, and G. So it's like a very redundant code and very hard to figure out the patterns in it. Um, but we were able to do this with an AI model from my lab. And not only does it correctly fold chromosomes uh, based on experimental measures that we can make, but it can predict whether someone with a disease has an error in how their chromosomes are folding up. And this is completely off most people's radar in terms of a potential cause of disease. Everyone's laser focused on the proteins. And so we've opened up this whole other area of causality for human genetic diseases. Um, and uh, that addresses the fact that for many of these diseases, even though we know they're genetic, 50%, 60%, 80% of patients have no explanation in their proteins. We know they have a genetic disease, but when they get sequencing done in the hospital, their proteins look fine. And so we can now start to address that other part of the genome.